I'm a professional programmer, as are most or all of you, and I'm also a teacher of computer science for kids in grades three through 12. And sometimes I'm in a new school and I don't know the kids and I want a tool to show me where people are sitting and also to interact with them. So I've just scrolled down and these are all just made up names. Uh, soon your name or your made up name is gonna be in here and I'm gonna show you what this does. So this is kind of a seating chart. So I can look out and see where people are and I can call on people randomly. Um, all right, so let's get this going. I'm gonna grab the names here. Tony Stark, you just got in there in time. I'm guessing that's a made up name because I think that's one of those superhero guys, am I right? Okay, so I'm ready with those. Now I'm gonna run the Python program, which I'm gonna come back to um, a little bit later. Okay, so this is ready to go. Let's run. Okay, now if you are one of those volunteers in a second, you'll be able to go to that page. Oh, I put a password in, it's in the code you might be able to see it. So I paste in the names of the students in my roster and um, I'm gonna push set. And now you, you 10 or 12, however many people that is, please go in. I see, I see little snitches telling me some incoming connections are, are happening. And choose your name from the list. And I'm gonna, uh, let's see. So there we go. Any connection there until quit. Great, and then try to pick a seat that somebody else is not in. So look at my screen here. So, oh, somebody, here's a little message because sometimes the kids mess with each other and they place themselves in a seat that somebody else is in. You know, it's kind of an honor system. Um, so here were these, here are you guys. So this is great and the, What's remaining in the list is the people who haven't yet come to the web page and selected their name and uh, indicated where they're sitting. So obviously I've got to change this now so it doesn't rely on a physical classroom because uh, who knows how long it's gonna be um, until we're back in the physical classroom. So I have some Python questions. I'm gonna pretend that you're a Python class and you know, for obvious reasons. I have some questions prepared that I'm gonna ask. Hopefully you'll all be able to answer these. And so, um, but first I'm gonna enable the chat because I, you guys seem responsible. So let me go to the control section here and I'll just enable the chat. So if any of you wanna chat, why go right ahead. Um, good, now I'm gonna to go to the poll section here and I'm gonna paste in the questions that I prepared beforehand. And now I'm gonna start uh, asking you questions. So if you're one of the volunteers, you've gotta be watching your, your own screen and then you've gotta be watching this too. You know what I should do? I should be a client as well so that people can see what it looks like for the clients. Let's see if I can do that quickly here. So let me move this over to the left, another window, put it over here and I'll just, um, copy this URL and do what you guys are doing. And I'll just pick somebody who's unclaimed. So let's see, help me find somebody that's not in there. Um, that's there, there. I don't wanna displace somebody. That's terrible to do that, but I really wanna show somebody. Darn it. You can displace me, Dave, Connor. Ah, Connor, thanks. Great, so there's a free seat at D4, so D4. Great, so um, here's Connor back in D4. Great, so let's see how you guys do with these actual questions. Um, so the question is ready to send out, and when I push enable here, it's gonna appear at all the clients. All right, so let's see how you guys do. What's the difference? What is a difference between tuples and lists? And when you answer, you're, you're 
station will light up green here. So actually, I guess it takes a while to type in, well, tuples are immutable or whatever you're going to say. Ah, here we go. So some answers are coming in. And then when I see that I've got the critical mass or however many I want to have, then I will, and also it shows here how many are in. So I've got five answers. So I click uh, here and now it shows the answers that I got. Oops, let's try that again. Okay, so tuples can't be changed. They're immutable. The former is immutable. The latter is immutable. Good. Now that's a, that's a prominent difference. Okay, we'll do one more and then I'll show something else. Okay, so let's see. So I do that to turn the question off. Pick the next question. This is a short answer, so you only get seven seconds for this. What keyword creates a function? Got two answers. So this is a nice tool. I can kind of see how things are going. And I think that's been seven seconds. So this is a short answer. So I'm going to show the answers in the chart. So here everybody wrote in def. That's great. You're an awesome crowd. Or you're cheating in Slack. I don't know. Who knows? Let somebody go and look. Um, okay, so that's that. What else is interesting here? Um, I can just think of a question. So I'm going to say, um, oh, and this, this is for a live classroom, though, but we can try it. So I could just ask the class, and let me go here to control, and I'll turn on the statuses. So you can indicate, so you now have some radio buttons. Uh, so you can say that you need help, or you have the answer, or you're done, or whatever. So it's kind of a way to just see, get, take the temperature of the class. Um, so let me ask a question. Um, so who's prepared to explain recursion? Please indicate that you have the answer. And then I'll call on one of you randomly, and I, and I won't actually ask you to, to answer. Okay, so I can go to calling, and I can kind of throw names in a hat, so I'll throw everybody's name in twice. And for this question, I'm going to call, I could call from the whole population or from only the three who indicate they have the answer. So I'll do that. So this says what? So it, picture, it picked uh, Richard. So I guess Richard could type an answer in the chat because we've got the chat there. Um, um, don't feel like you need to because that's not something you can explain easily, although maybe you could, you could do that. All right, um, I think it's time to go look at the code and so let's do that. Uh, just anything else that I should say. Oh, there's a bell I can ring and it just has your client play a wave file, but it's a really loud bell. So I don't think I want to do it because people watching later with headphones on are going to have nice volume levels. But anyway, um, yeah, sorry. Now you want to hear the bell, don't you? Um, code. Let's look at code. <laughs> I'll keep that running. Uh, oh, I just as I jumped away, I saw somebody wrote, stop cheating to someone else in the chat. All right, um, I bookmarked a few spots in the code, but first I should just tell you roughly how this all works. And I generally don't do kind of uh, slides. So I'll just show you that for the Python application, it uses Flask and Flask socket IO. And this gives a quick and low latency way to have asynchronous uh, bi bidirectional communication between the clients written in JavaScript and the Python application. And then in the JavaScript code, that's using socket.io. All right, code now. Not a whole lot of it, but just a little bit. Okay, so this is the main application, and here you see I'm importing things from Flask Socket IO. Here, if you're someone who's familiar with Flask, I'm creating the Flask application. And then here I'm creating a Socket IO object, and I'm giving it the reference to the Flask application. And then later at the bottom, I'll just jump to that now and come back we have socket IO, Flask socket IO start things. Okay, back to the top. So there's that. Okay, so 
Um, this is a flask thing. This is a decorator and says that if someone comes to the root uh, of the path, they will be delivered the student page, which is what you volunteers saw. And if someone asks for a slash teacher, they'll be delivered the teacher page. And it's from that page that the JavaScript with the client code loads. Okay. Now these decorators are for socket for Flask socket IO. And they say, in this case, when a connection from a client occurs, just log it. Uh, sorry, from the teacher client, just log it. Um, the communication is divided into namespaces. So there's one for the teacher and one for the student. Um, let me just double check. Do I have a couple more minutes left? Uh, you have uh, three minutes left. Great, thanks. This is, this is after the 10 minutes, so yeah. Okay, so we're already after the 10 minutes? That's correct. So I'm kind of in the Q&A time? That's correct also. Okay, good. Uh, so here's the connect request and um, just show you a couple other highlights here in the code. So let me jump to, here's where some settings are stored. So the program keeps track of class periods. And so all this configuration here is just in, in Python code. Those controls you saw, the checkboxes, need help, have answer, and done, those are configured in here like this. And then um, I don't want to show much with the client code, but it looks like um, this. So we, um, we just do this IO connect and then um, I think a little, little bit down this file, we have socket.on. So when the ring the ring bell message comes through, then this is where that sound file gets played. Okay, I think I'll uh, leave it there and just leave you with this page for this presentation that has some links at the bottom. Here's the code to Room Helper 3000. It is a work in progress. Um, other code from me, links to Flask Socket IO and the client API. And I'm not an expert with, with WebSockets or any of these things. So I really would love to have your feedback on how, what you would improve uh, in the application. Maybe there are better ways to do things. Okay, so that concludes this talk.